<laughs> I had an interesting experience when recently I was launching over the weekend a new type of no ministry that is designed to help people understand how to process information like a lot of times different places on the web or on Facebook or on Twitter or some other place you'll get flooded with data that you don't know where it came from <laughs> you only know that if you if you click it it'll be passed on with your name attached to it you know and your credibility and uh, a lot of times there's a lot of garbage out there that's not true and most of the time people will read the headline not research whether or not the article is true or not or if they click on it they'll see some fancy looking website that speaking from my own personal experience anybody could create and make it look like it's important and then you find down the road that it was all false that it was some kid you know playing games or playing you know important and making a facade on the web a facade is a phony storefront that just like in the old west how they used to just have a square building but then they had these big fronts that looked like oh so important and most of the time on the web that's the way most of the information and most of the websites are they have this big facade up front and when you cut away all the extra garbage there's really not much they're saying or doing and that's kind of what you know i ran into launching this new site basically called tabloid christianity that's warning people about or trying to help them to educate them in a way that they can understand that a lot of the facade is phony and there's not much reality to what is being said so it's to help them to know how to tell the difference and when i did that i had somebody that just came out of nowhere and just started just coming one after another telling me all these wrong things and wrong attitudes and wrong things and you know i kept listening and you know responding and sharing and responding and sharing and responding and sharing and normally i just ignore it but for some reason the lord had me just keep talking and eventually the person you know dumped me but the joy we have is not so much in telling someone they're wrong or they're right but in recognizing that that person is a valid individual and that there is a responsibility we have to care for that person not to change their mind <clears throat> that's between them and the holy spirit it's not for us to change their mind but it's for us to care about the person enough to share in a positive way whatever we can in some way that maybe something will stick and maybe they'll you know change their attitude or their actions or their perspective in some way but at the same time, we must recognize ourselves that God is leading us and that if God tells you to do something, don't be surprised if you run into adversity and that it's designed, customized directly to attack you in some way that you either are sensitive to or you might respond to in a negative way. Because as I watched and saw the development of these personal attacks, I kept thinking, wow, this person doesn't even know that they're not attacking me, but they're being used to attack me. And I, I just had compassion upon that person and, and recognized that, hey, this wasn't about, you know, the ministry of what I'm doing or this wasn't about what God is doing to inspire me with it, but rather it was meant to influence me in some way to cause me to react to this person as opposed to the posting of what was being said and so i just stayed with the post you know commented on whatever it was and gradually the person just left you know <laughs> they all do because don't be provocable god knows exactly how to customize your life and your strength and your weaknesses so that he can accomplish his purpose either in you or any other person that he might be using to either provoke or invoke some kind of response so that you'll prove out what is your faith in him as he directs you and that's why we have devotionals and we go back to god and talk to him all through our day because we will be provoked and how you respond is your choice and I pray that you ask God 
to lead you in that joy. <laughs> and he went out carrying his own cross. There is a poem called The Changed Cross. It represents a weary one who thought that her cross was surely heavier than those others whom she saw about her, and she wished that she might choose another instead of her own. She slept, and in her dream she was led to a place where many crosses lay, crosses of different shapes and sizes. There was the little one, most beauteous to behold, set in jewels and gold, and she said, Ah, this I can wear with comfort. So she took it up, but her weak form shook beneath it. The jewels and the gold were beautiful, but they were far too heavy for her. Next, she saw a lovely cross with fair flowers entwined around its sculptured form. Surely this one was for her. She lifted it, and beneath the flowers were piercing thorns which tore her flesh. At last she went on, and she came to a plain cross without jewels and without carvings, with only a few words of love inscribed upon it. This she took up, and it proved the best of all, the easiest to be born, and she looked upon it, bathed in the brilliance that fell from heaven, she recognized her old cross. She had found it again, and it was the best of all and lightest for her. God knows what cross we need to bear. We do not know how heavy other people's crosses are. We envy someone who is rich. His is a golden cross set with jewels, but we do not know how heavy it is. Here is another whose life seems very lovely. She bears a cross twined with flowers. If we could try all the other crosses, then we think lighter than our own. We would at last find that not one of them suited us so well as our own. The reality of our experience with God is that to determine to let Him choose for us what we should not choose for ourselves because only He knows what's best in our life, to cause us to conform to how He would want us to live our life as He chooses to live in us and as we choose to give our life to Him. Because it's not a question only of being a Christian and saying we know Him, but it's a question of living as we know him and being that person that is a person who knows him that is obvious by how we bear our cross take up our life and follow him notice how i said that because in reality as you live your life in him you will bear a cross of your own flesh you must nail to that piece of wood so that you can be alive unto God to accomplish his purposes that he wants to touch other people with. And you can't be someone else but what God wants you to be in your life today as he chooses to lead you each and every day as you ask him to. Today, that is your cross. Will you ask him to lead your life or will you ask him to just bless your life with your choices you've made? It's your call. It really is. But when he says, take up your cross and follow me, you know he wants to live his life in you.